and the stories we put on color. As you saw, the first thing I played to you was that, ha ha, shoo! <laughs> that was the sneezing. <laughs> now, this, is the, this has nothing to do with music except you're trying to express something. And I wish I had more time to could have played these other things that I had in there. But you see, any th stories added to sound energy or to color energy, which is the same, <laughs> is not acceptable. It doesn't serve any good purpose. Because we react to sound as much as we react to color. It's a natural phenomenon. So Bach had the good sense of remaining to his own nature, which means to be naturally structured. If you understand what I'm saying. In other words, he was very logically structuring the tonalities without inflicting, trying to describe something. Even though there are librettos written about it, yes. I have a conversation with Ed Edgar Varel, the modern composer who lived here. In fact, I was gonna play for you something of John Cage, one of his pupils. He says, with the composition of 12, uh, play, 12 uh, radios, you know, it's a lot of nonsense. All he was doing is just playing the kids, click, crack, click, crack, 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 like that, see? And another one was with the uh, composition of the 12 conductors. I mean, this is that playing with gimmickry instead of structuring sound. Go ahead. Which is the other part? Well, some people who try the spiritual I don't know what is spirit really, the spiritual of men, I really don't know that. Or mythical men, or mystical men, I don't know what that is. These are mainly words, aren't they? To me, a man is a man like a flower is a flower. Is the flower spiritual? Is the dog spiritual? You don't think it's spiritual or it is? Well, I, I mean, no, it's not a complicated, it's a very... I know, it's a life like you are. Are you different than the dog? Why? Just because you think in your own way and the dog thinks in his own way? I'm not, I think they're all our fellow men, they're our fellow creatures. I feel that these are not to be differentiated like that because I think we make too much of these little spirit, abstract words, all these mythological words which have absolutely nothing to do with life, really. I don't know, you know, people do drawings for catharsis purposes. They go to a psychiatrist and they, they look at Rorschach. I have something in here about Rorschach, but I didn't have time to play it for you. But you see, the tragedy is that we are still bamboozled with all of these things that have been inflicted upon us by all these uh, merchants of publicity and merchants of so-called art and that we cannot extricate ourselves and be simple, lovely human beings, natural human beings. We are at attaching ourselves, and instead of looking at a person, we are looking at the drawing of a person. We'd rather have that. Is that what you want? I'd rather see you rather than a drawing of you. And if a drawing of you is art, I said, well, call it. Call it spiritual. Is that spiritual? No. You are the spiritual to me, not the drawing. I don't differentiate, really, I don't cut. Some people say to me, well, this is the material and the spiritual. I said, which side of you is the spiritual, which is the material? Well, how do you cut it? Can you do it? I, I'd like to see if you can define to me what spiritual is. <laughs> then we can, yes, sir. So I think uh, you emphasize structures that uh, do work. And uh, you feel that this is what a structure should do. But yet, on the other hand, you pointed to the Eiffel Tower and said it was great. Is that true? At of the time when they did that, it was structurally sound. Yes, even though they put some ornamentation with it, as the Willis Polk did in the building. For the time, they used to still do that. It's true. 
they still they, they were structural, but at the same time they were still contaminated with the build of the art. Yeah, but well, why do you say that? Pardon? But does it do any work? No, the tower does the work without the ornament that they put there. I'm saying that at that time they still were uh, contaminated with that art. They had to put this, like Willis Polk did, you see. And this is what Sullivan tried to do, except that Sullivan wasn't doing it structurally. He was really pasting it on, you see. Today we don't need that. We already trans trespassed that area. Yes, sir? Are your buildings uh, natural phenomena? I mean, if they aren't, then why do you do them? Aren't they the same trash as everything else that you've shown? Um, where, where is the line drawn? You know? Well, and if your buildings are man-made, it's not a natural phenomenon. And then that would be the trash. I mean, where, where is the line drawn where the trash and the natural phenomenon occurs? Well, anything you do, I'm not uh, disassociating from activity. The human being is capable uh, of abstracting from life anything and do you, do you think your brain all the activity of your brain is trash because you did it no I, well no i'm saying that you asked me that question I'm, I'm posing that question back to you that if you call my activity trash then i said if you think about something will that be trash thinking no well you pointed out some things that were man-made Oh, those don't mean anything there. No, 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 you misunderstood me. I didn't say because they were man-made, they're no good. I said, when you do something that is ornate, that trespasses its own structural integrity, then you are on dangerous ground, that's what I'm saying. Not because they're man-made. Well, after all, we are human beings, we have to do some, we're not working in a vacuum. Side of your head, you hang your beret on. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Which side of your head your beret will lean to? Well, this is. Bravo. Is that a good question or a bad one? What does this has to do with what we're talking about? Nothing. <laughs> Look. The what? Not be sorry, without your beret. This has nothing to do with, with what I'm talking about. Look, I'm talking about the things we do for society. We as doers have great responsibility what we do. Anything you do for your own self, you can do anything you damn please. You can even shoot tobacco at 3 o'clock in the morning and spit on your carpet if you want to. I don't care. But if you do something for society, then you have to have great deal of thought and be very responsible that's what i'm saying so because i put in my hat this way i can put it anywhere i want that's nothing to do with you or anybody it's me but i'm not giving you this i'm giving you what's inside of me that i know if i did a house for you or a building for you it will have nothing to do with bending my beret or what and i put it that way because i like it that way to me <laughs> but I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> yes? You, you talked about the people dressed in certain ways and they were doing it that way. You, you put them down. They're, they're kind of I'm putting down. You misunderstood. I didn't put them down okay. because of their dress. I put them down because they put me, the cat meow. What does that mean? Or some girl put patches on her ass. Well, that's what this gentleman just asked. What does your hat mean? My hat means because it covers my head because I perspired, I prefer to keep it warm. And this is the simplest hat I can have. So what? I mean, this, this, is, not, this is not anything that is, I'm trying to impose on a, on a suit. Well, you're standing in front of all of us and we're seeing you. And that hat seems to have a uh, certain character to it. Well, OK, give it that character. But I'm not being funny, am I? I'm not putting cat meows, and I'm putting t several patches. It's, well, if you're to ask me, I might have a different opinion. Well, that's, a, that's your opinion, all right. So what do you say and what do you do don't really uh, coincide? Well, possibly to you, but I think... His interpretation 
of what you have said. At his stage, he is at one level and yes. difficulty to understand where it is that you're at. And how long will it take him to get there? I don't know. This is something we have to ask him. <laughs> He has, been, he has been picking on details which have nothing to do with what I was saying to you, which is really true. Of course, they are all entitled to their own opinion, but I'm saying if you do something, your activities are something else. Yeah, just a minute. This. No, beauty doesn't come. I told you already the reason I chose. The blue was studied first for a performance. Then I chose the color because I said to you before, color or sound is a natural phenomenon, okay? Now, therefore, I chose the one that was the most harmonious. This is, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm uh, arbitrarily choosing something. All right, so I'm saying that I made the best decision possible for what I did, according to the requirements of that particular first decision, which was the glass with the plants. Uh, call it whatever you wish, but I'm saying to you that I did in the best possible, instead of taking arbitrary putting a, a, a yellow glass or some other glass. I didn't do that. You see. I'm, it is. Yes. And you see, aesthetics doesn't enter into the opinion of uh, my vocabulary. Because I don't know what that is. To be natural is very important. Well, call it that. Why do you buy that box and understand? Call I agree with you 100% we live in a society which is, which is bombarded by junk and greed, but there is beauty in art in our society, and it has to have a place in our culture until we are no longer in existence. Darling, have anything you want. I'm not saying this. I'm not preventing you from having beauty, aesthetics, call it anything you wish. All I'm saying is there is one area that we forget and that is very very serious and very important and that is to be natural it's within our being to be natural you heard already this biochemist say that our whole being every organ of us does some work transforming this to that this to that we are doing constantly work that's an integrity of activity this is being natural because otherwise you won't be here I'm talking to you I'm being with you now. If I, I can be funny and, and still I'm talking to you, but that's some another area. If I want to be serious with you, I have to discuss with you as a natural human being, rather than as funny, hello girl, you know, if I do this to you. I mean, it's something another area. What levels are we talking about? The level of mockery or real seriousness? The tragedy is we have been confusing both of them. And one is confused as art. This mockery has been considered as sacrosanct art. And this is what it is, really. It's an entertainment. Yeah, I have a question about that. I always thought that uh, art, as well as science, is a whole striving to solve the problems. Are they? Each, each in their own way. And what makes science or logic more, uh, you know, I haven't found that art has any rationality. Art is an arbitrary decision and in, in involvement of human beings. In the past, they thought they were very rational because they didn't know anything except they used to give this as translations, as appeasements to the gods. The less they knew, the more symbols they needed. And these were their symbols. The arts were that. Okay, perhaps let's say, uh, for example, you wish to find a beloved. What 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 word do you love? Okay. Love? Love is a natural phenomenon. You won't be here without that. Right. 
So, so what if you would like to, uh, to investigate it? You can investigate it just as well artistically. My friend, you don't even have to even go to school to investigate love. I remember, I'll tell you a very interesting story. No, I'm not trivializing. I'm telling you a very good fact that possibly if you want to investigate with LSD or with dope and all that, there are a lot of treatises on that. A lot of people wrote books about that, how you can love intensify and all that. But you see, you are, you have the whole equipment of life built in in you for that love capability. All right, use it. You don't need to have a picture to show you how to, to love. You're born with it. Nobody tells you how to love any more than nobody tells you how to walk. Does your mother teach you how to walk? Never. The mother is there to guide you. The child is already there the minute to get the strength and she walks. It's built in in there. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, isn't that a viable entity? Yes, this is lovely. Yes, there are also those who make a mockery of music. And what I'm saying, this is exactly what I'm making the issue. There are those who are serious, like the picture you saw of Einstein, thinking seriously about it as a face, and another one making a mockery with that face. Now, in music, they do that. At the time, in fact, I was talking with Varese. I have a tape of that. I wish I had it in and played to you. Varese said the same thing. He said, at the time of Bach, there were hundreds of composers. Nobody hears about him anymore. But Bach still remains. Why? Because he was serious. He wasn't making mockery. He, he, he remained to his own naturalness. When you say serious, you mean? Natural. Natural integrity. Yeah. It was very natural. In other words, natural means... I did exactly that. You see, this, the flowers are structured beautifully. Nothing else added. Exactly as structure. Bach was structured that way. You see, grasped it. Yeah. I, I suppose that, uh, that Beethoven is less serious than Bach, and Stravinsky is not serious at all because they're both of Many of them, they do fall into that category sometimes. But Beethoven does uh, up to a certain point. Don't forget, in the last years, Beethoven was trying to compose like Bach. In the Sonata 110, 111, he was trying to be like Bach. Yes? Chopin used to start his days by playing the 48 Preludes and Fugues of Bach. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not, listen, you can disagree with me and I'm just merely giving you a point of view for whatever it's worth. Do you like mathematics? Like math of course I do like math. Do you, do you agree like Bertrand Russell, that math or, or, or Bertrand Russell? Used to believe in the, uh, mathematics is the uh, source of philosophy and the source of uh, truth and knowledge. We use, look, all the sciences that are, that is within our capability which adds knowledge to understanding of the world and us, I believe in. Call it mathematics, call it uh, jujibu, I don't care. That's perfectly all right, but now we have other things which even may, well, math we have to define mathematics, yes? You have to define what it is. What are you talking about, numbers? Well, the concept, and it's a very deep thing. Today we have much greater concepts that even will flabbergast you with the computers we have, which are all the result of all this knowledge which has been accumulated through mathematics originally. Yes. Any knowledge that comes from our brains, as long as it is, it helps us, then okay. But if it isn't, no. That does not mean, though, that there's a unique solution to the problem. There will be many solutions to the same problem. Yes, there are. There are many logical solutions to the same problem. There are, but invariably you find there will be one will be the best. That's a value judgment. That's a 
No, 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 no. I'm saying not valid judgment. They, they will be one that will be really the best that serves the best. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead, Professor. See, my problem is I have a beautiful girl with me here. She wanted to talk to you, but she has to go home. <laughs> does, does she have to go home with you? She can stay with me. <laughs> Why do you want to do that, dear? Goodbye, darling. In, I don't know, tomorrow maybe. Okay. Okay, darling. Ciao. So glad to see you. Well, anyway, I think we had enough. Eh? Don't you think so?